Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 21 of Wearables Weekly. Uh, I'm your host, Keith Acorn, and uh, with me today I've got my uh, two lovely co-hosts, Libby Chang. Hi. Hi. And Noble Ackerson. Hello. And we've also got a couple of special guests today. Uh, starting from my right, we've got uh, Ivan Yudi, uh, who's a system integrator here in the Bay Area. Uh, he's uh, a glass explorer that got in during the uh, If I Had Glass campaign. And he's also a host on uh, another Sogi podcast called uh, Sogi Asia, right? Yes, that that's right. right. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And we've also got another special guest uh, today, uh, Dan Barron, who loves to be called Dan Baran, by the way, uh, who's a, a web developer uh, outside of Chicago, and uh, he's been a former guest on the show. So uh, welcome back, Dan. And he is the head of the Chicago GDG chapter. Not Chicago. I don't want to claim that. Schomburg. Uh, the infamous Schomburg. GDG Schomburg. Schomburg. Oh, never mind. <laughs> How's it going, Dan? It's going good. Cool. All right. Interesting. Well, can... we'll put it that way. <laughs> As always. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and uh, just do a little recap of, uh, of our last week. So uh, I saw on Google+, Plus, uh, Noble, you had an event you went to uh, recently. Is that correct? I did, yes. I was at, I uh, was lucky to um, host one of our rare Society of Glass Enthusiasts Mid-Atlantic events, and this one was in Washington, D.C., uh, and it covered sports and fitness uh, with Google Glass, and I talked to a bunch of um, aspiring developers and and designers and uh, entrepreneurs of all walks of life out in the D.C. metro area, and talked about at least my experiences building um, uh, fitness apps uh, and and why it's important to go native uh, in order to get the user you know, a more, um, you know, a, a better experience. And then a day later, of course, they launched the GDK, which of made course. my presentation uh, <laughs> very antiquated. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's still it's still native, right? GDK is, is still native. So, well, yeah. The, so, the, such as, uh, you know, working on beta products, things come and go. But Things come uh, and go, <laughs> which can't confirm or deny my app uh, may not work in obviously because it's it's just an Android app running on glass side loaded. So, gotcha. Well, it looks like a pretty good turnout. Um, so, yeah, it was it was actually a smaller turnout than I expected because you know I'm a rock star, so I expect you know you know you know a whole stadium. <laughs> I expect to fill up the. Uh, yeah, the, the the Verizon Center out here. So, um, unfortunately, there are not that many people interested. Uh, it was only a few uh, tens of people that came. So. Mostly uh, already explorers or people that were just interested in glass. Uh, it was a nice little mix. Um, there are, there are a lot more explorers than the, our last event. And it's actually very inspiring to see how many explorers uh, Google effectively tripled. The amount of explorers within the last two weeks, or was it three weeks at this point? Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, as Dan might attest to, uh, GDG um, founders or hosts mm -hmm. got another 10, so they've just, I don't know how many GDG um, uh, founders there are, so it's hard to do the math, but yeah, they, they, there's, there's gonna at be... least 100, right? About well, it was only the U.S. ones that got them. Oh, well. really? Yeah. Okay. So it was not a world thing, unfortunately, for yeah. the rest of the world. That does make so, sense, though. That so give or sense. take, at the end of this month, maybe at the end of the year, there might be a good solid 30,000 explorers out there. Wow. 30,000? That would be uh, yeah, pretty big. If, I mean, just sort of fuzzy math, uh, um, assuming that every explorer... You know there are ten thousand explorers out there. We know there really aren't, but you know, and th they've tripled the number uh, within the last couple. You know, add you know plus or minus however many people didn't get it plus the uh, GDG guys. So it's you know margin of error there is within twenty five to maybe forty thousand. Cool. 
Well, um, I know, uh, Ivan, you were also uh, representing a uh, very interesting event going on. Unfortunately, our other co-hosts, uh, Cecilia and Aaron, who were also there, couldn't quite make it to the show. So we're definitely going to be pick your brain a little later about what, what you saw. But can you tell us just briefly about what, what the event was? Well, um, as you all might know, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure you guys already know. So a few weeks ago, uh, all explorers, we got an email from Google inviting us to uh, for this GDK hackathon event in San Francisco. And I was one of the lucky one, I guess, uh, to get picked. So um, the event was in the Google San Francisco office in Embarcadero. Um, we, I think the event started around 8.30 on Tuesday, this Tuesday, and we got admitted. Uh, we, we had to line up, you know, um, and then they were actually checking the security pretty tight, just making sure that we actually belong there. So, um, uh, but that, that was good, you know. They, they, they also invited some press uh, from several publications, and um, around 9 or 9.15, um, Timothy Jordan, which is the developer advocate for Glass, he started uh, doing uh, announcements for um, for for the uh, what they call a sneak peek of the GDK. So it's actually not even a developer preview; it's before that. So it's really really early gotcha. um, in the cool. in the. Uh, in the, in the time. Well, we have lots. We can talk about it to GDK, so let's save that a little bit for the news. Um, but uh, but definitely thank you for uh, participating yeah. and giving us some inside scoops. <laughs> and uh, let's see. We've also got... Uh, so, uh, Dan, you you, uh, you mentioned something you might want to talk about later in the show. Want to give a sneak peek of your own? No, we're not going to give a sneak peek yet. I'll... We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 That's a spoiler. Question. Anybody wants to question just, and answers, though. You may want to just hang on you know, for the whole show. Don't skip out yeah. you know, at the end or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's just sticking around the whole time. Yeah. Pay <laughs> close attention. That is so how I might you say something. Video. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to live up to the hype we're creating now, by the way. But I, I think we will. So. Cool. And. Uh, one other quick uh, update from uh, from Libby and Libby and Ivan, although I'm technically uh, using it right now. Uh, <laughs> there was a a few uh, a few uh, new devices uh, that made it to the state side, uh, and that would be the Omate smartwatch. So, do you want to right. show off yours there? Cool. Everyone's got an Omate. <laughs> See if I can show off mine too. It looks a lot my smaller on key. Yeah. Yeah. Like it takes up my entire wrist when I have it on. It's almost like the size of my hand. Or I, I, of my I was a little nervous before Libby brought it home. She was wearing it, and yeah, it looks like about twice the thickness of her wrist. But it's actually not I mean, not quite so bad. I'm actually a big guy. You guys know me, but even even though you know, it, it still looks big on my hand, which okay. I don't really mind. I think it's a good size, but some people might find this a bit bigger. Might, might might find this too big, but for me, I think it's a good size. Yeah, and from like you know, width wise, it's not wider than my wrist. It's not too too tall. Uh, it's probably comparable to the to the gear. I've played around with them before. I haven't tried them side by side, but they seem. It, really it's definitely size. comparable to the gear. It's, I would I would definitely say that it's heavier than what I'm used to wearing, but um. Considering what it does, I wouldn't say it's too big. You know, you've got to build up his biceps. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And we'll we'll talk about that just a little bit more. But uh, but it's very cool to uh, to have a little early experience with with the Omates. And for those of you who may have watched the show, we've brought it up a few times. It's a very interesting device. Cool. Well, uh, what, well, are we going to talk about this later, or or can you guys answer one simple question for me? Maybe. What's yeah, the battery cool. life like? It's. Well, Ivan, you you've had it longer than me, so maybe your yours will well, be more. Well, I mean, uh, when I first got it, you know, I uh, I charged it for the full night, and the morning in the morning I just take it off. I, I put it on my uh, wrist. I turn on Wi-Fi. I turn on Bluetooth. I wore it for the whole day. I think um that day I mostly stay at home, so I just uh, I'm constantly on Wi-Fi. Um, when I got a message for email, I just check it briefly, you know, like take a look. And I think around eight or seven or eight p.m., um, the battery is dead. Mm -hmm. So it it lasts for like it's about the same as the same usage as my phone, you know, like uh, where you you have to charge it every night. 
So I mean, I think it's a good, you know, it's a good okay. battery and life. The, but and it, I wouldn't it, say it's great. Does it have a SIM card or? or yes, you do need card? a you do need to put a SIM card in it. Uh, yeah. So right now, so this is a European version. So I think T-Mobile works and um, was it, the uh, AT and T. So sure. those are the only two. Those are the only two companies that really work with it. I haven't really put my SIM card on it because it's a European version. But I was mm -hmm. told that you can actually use it to make calls and to get like a two two G um, speed. But mm -hmm. I haven't really tested. Yeah, and in my yeah, quick experience sure. with the battery life, just before we leave that all together, uh, you know, I've only really been playing with it today. I had charged it up two days ago. I haven't had it on my charger since since two days ago. Um, all yesterday kind of sat on my desk. Today I've actually been wearing it, and it's at about 50% battery life right now. So really? For what it's worth, yeah. So I Jeff mean, Bond wants to know if you guys are left-handed. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm wearing it on my right hand because I have a Fitbit on my <laughs> left hand. <laughs> so, yeah. Ah. So that, I mean, I tried to put it on, on the same uh, hand, but it doesn't really feel good. Why don't you put your Fitbit on your right hand? Um, I don't know. That's a good idea. <laughs> you know, this is going to become an issue pretty soon in the future. The, the, the real estate on your wrist is going to be a exactly. major issue. <laughs> location, location, location. I'm That's glad right. I don't wear watches. Is that something you would ever consider wearing, Dan? No. I would not. I... Pretty we don't like wearing watches, and you know, I, I think wearable technology is obviously, even as Wearable Weekly would say, is coming. It's where things are going. I think it's got to be in multiple form factors, so yes, absolutely. People like me that won't wear a watch. There's other people that won't wear glasses. Mm -hmm. I I completely agree. I think it's. I mean, the one nice thing about wearables is it's completely. Personalize, uh, you can completely personalize, personalize it. Can't talk today. Um, so, it, you know, everybody can make their own choices, which is great. I mean, it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to stick with one form factor. Yeah, I'd say the one, the one like, thing I definitely would like to see change about the watches in general, and, and this one's no different, but uh, the thickness. It's, it's actually not too bad. You can see under, under my normal clothing, it's not really that obvious, but... Uh, it is noticeable, like just looking at it, glancing at it, that it, it is a little bit thick. So I think Pebble so, is really the only one that's gotten the thickness about right, but that's because they're using a whole different technology for it. Much lower. Yeah. Time. So responding to Dan's uh, comment, I don't generally wear watches, but um, I start wearing this just for testing. But when I talked to Laurent, uh, which is the CEO of Omate, um, I asked him about like the design. Why is it so bulky? Why is it so big? And his uh, response was that Omate stands for Outdoor Mate. So uh, what what's actually intended is that you know like when when you do outdoor activities, like when you're biking, when you're running, you don't want to carry your phones. Mm -hmm. So right, with right. this, you know, you, you can just remove your SIM card, put it on your watch, and then. Wear it for running or for biking. It's it's more, much more convenient. So I, I think that's the idea is not to wear it all the time, but like uh, when you need it to, you have something that you can use. At so, the same yeah. time, I can almost guarantee that if you are outside with that argument, if you are outside um, with the GPS on, using it for running you would run out of battery and granted I am guilty of not owning one, so I don't really know this for a fact. Do you think you'd run out of battery after mile one? I um, don't know. That's a good question, actually. I probably should test that. I actually don't think so. The battery life on the Omei seems to be... It's not super great, but it does seem to last... It's its better than glass. I mean, it does, it does seem to last you through the day, at least. Um, if you're actually running... Um, well, you know, I, I should take that back because if you're constantly using the GPS, it might it might suck up more of the battery. Hmm. What I'm battery, there's a quick question. Uh, it's like a, sorry. Uh, there's a really, really quick question from Jacob Lee about Google Glass lasting about four hours. That's about right, Jacob. <laughs> if sorry, you're using it heavily, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, but his says little to no use. 
in the yeah. corner. I mean, I don't know. This uh, uh, Jacob uh, pro tip: if you are enabling a bunch of glassware on there that uh, you don't really need, just un uninstall it. Just go with the bare minimum that you really need. So the thing that does take up battery on glass is pro anything that requires processing power is going to suck up battery on glass pretty quickly. So if you've got anything running in the background, that's that's going to do it. And the screen. Oh, yes. Actually, Dad at, ran an experiment, and he left the screen on all day, on it, just flashing colors. And he said that he was able to keep it on for pretty much all day. Interesting. Hmm. It didn't get too hot or anything? Well, he had it sitting on a table. But okay. he just had something where it would just flash colors on the screen. It wasn't really processing anything. It was just flashing colors. That's very interesting. I'll have to check out that, uh, that test. Cool. Well, uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the news a little bit. So we, we kind of hinted that there was an event, uh, not hinted, we said that there was an event going on in San Francisco, um, and it was a pretty big deal within the, the Glass developer community because uh, this was sort of the public unveiling of the GDK and the first sort of access that developers have had uh, to work on native Android applications officially on Glass. Uh, technically, people have been doing a little bit of native Android development before now, but now there's actually a, a platform that's like specifically geared at that. So um, there were also some new glassware announced. Have you guys tried any of the new glassware? Yes. I tried Word ones. Yes, that one, that one got a lot of press. That's an amazing like concept. It's just the, the look of it. But do you want to go ahead and describe it? The use case is great. Um, I believe they have an iPhone app as well. They might have Android. I'm not totally sure. Um, they have. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the same app, but a few years ago, uh, I was looking, you know, like for a translation app w before my trip, and I found a similar uh, technology where you can just like uh, point your phone into a sign, and it's gonna translate it in, in real time. Right. I don't know if it's if it's the same company. It's Wordlens. It's the same one. Frankly, oh, all yeah. all the apps, uh, all all. All the launch partners had existing apps that uh, they ported over. I have also used, uh, I'm uh, one track minded, so I definitely immediately checked out Strava. Um, it's, there, it's a fitness, a running app, which threw me off a little bit. It's a great app, but it threw me off a little bit because I don't know whether you guys noticed when the up, when you installed the uh, the the GDK apps, uh, immediately next to, in your timeline, you, th there was this head uh, detection card that came on. Yeah. I don't know whether you guys saw that, but I enabled that head detection for the first time in forever, and I went running, <laughs> and it kept on uh, locking my screen, so I, I I couldn't you know interact with Strava. So I thought it was Strava, but I came home and and realize it was just head detection not working <laughs> properly. Do you guys see that issue? Did you guys get a card to set up head detection? No. Um, I I just, is, is this specific to that app or to all the apps? No, it, it's, head detection is just a, um, a functionality under settings. For some right. reason, the day they announced the GDK, my glass, and actually a colleague of mine as well, who just got his glass, uh, also got the same thing where they got a card to say, hey, finish setting up your glass, hmm. and head detection was the only option unchecked, which I have never really used uh, head detection. So. No, but I got the same thing. I know what you're talking about, but the thing is, like, yesterday um, at the event, I exchanged my glass, uh -huh. and it guided me through all the process again, so I thought that's probably why I got that, but apparently it's not just me. And I don't know how to get rid of it. It's really annoying. Yeah, you have to go through it, and that's why I enabled it, and then I went running, oh. and it would keep locking. I guess head detection doesn't do too well when you're running, because it will just keep locking and unlocking. So the screen comes on at random time, and it goes... So I was actually... Before I got too critical of Strava, I actually did some investigation and found out 
that it was my stupidity enabling something that I shouldn't have. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's long and short of it is Strava is a great app. Um, I haven't tried the writing version, uh, but I will be doing that certainly this weekend. So very I, very I, simple. Less is more. I love it. I noticed there's uh, there's two Strava apps. When you said writing, is it the cycling app? That's I'm sorry. Yeah, cycling app. Okay, awesome. So. Uh, so can you just describe real quick how the Strava runs since you, you did play around with that a little bit? Is it uh, like detecting your stride? How how's it working? No, no, no. It's it's a simple timer. Uh, again, less is more, right? Uh, they they just giving you the bare minimum of what you need, which is the whole point of good glassware, right? Just just limited information, not too cluttered. Uh, but one nice thing that it does in addition to a timer to give you, you know. Um, how far you're going and how long you're doing it, uh, uh, you're running for, is your split time. So if you did a lap in, you know, 10 minutes, uh, a mile in 10 minutes, it will sort of give you a split time on the next, um, on the next mile. Very simple, to the point. I'm very confident that more exciting stuff is coming to both the cycling and the running app because the, I'm a huge Strava um, user. Uh, I have a I run with my Garmin watch, which is around here somewhere. It's a GPS watch by uh, 910X device that is uh, by Garmin, and I don't run with my phone. I just run with that, and when I come home, I sync it with my my computer, and it just uploads. This, I sync it with I then sync it with Strava, and I have all my running buddies and my running club friends on on Strava, and we just sort of give each other kudos and whatever. I'm going to swing right back to the word lenser a little bit because we kind of only briefly de described it, but uh, I don't know. To me, this is one of like the more like magical apps, <laughs> so I just wanted to focus on it a little bit more. Oh, yeah. So, um, uh, Dan, you were starting to describe like the functionality of it. But you look at a sign after, you know, you look at a sign and it can translate English, Spanish, French, German, and Portuguese, I want to say. Mm -hmm. Are the languages that it has on it? Um, I believe it's offline, so even if you're not connected, you can That's still do really, it. That seems really wow. key because what I was uh, like from the way the demos looked anyway, um, you know, it's it's not just merely giving you a subtitle over over life. It's actually like replacing the thing that like in the video itself. So if you're looking at a street sign and you're moving around, you actually it, like it matches the font type, it matches the placement. It's like very much like completely photoshopping like the the real world. So how do you it, initiate a word lens thing? I can't remember. Okay, glass translate this. Okay, that's what it yeah. was. Now is it um, doing like a like a real time video thing, or do you take a picture of it and it, and it does a translation? Real time video. Yeah, it's a real time video. Wow, that is really amazing. It's yeah, it's awesome. And what I've been playing around with it, and then uh, what I found out is that. It doesn't only work with like uh, science. So if you write, you, if you use handwriting like really, really neatly, it's gonna be able to translate that as well. Really, which I think really cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Definitely. It, right now, it's trying to translate uh, Dan's head. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a I'll couple of the ones. Uh, right something for you, Noble. <laughs> Uh, a couple of the other ones that got announced were a golf site, uh, which was uh, sort of like a, a golfing augmentation app to help you keep track of like how far you are from the hole and stuff like that, and a recipes app, which there already was like a, a recipes app using Mir API. Yeah. But this, mm -hmm. is, uh, yep. uh, but this uh, theoretically could do more. Did any of you guys try this one out? I installed it. I haven't really tried it yeah. too much yet, though. Mm. No, I don't I'm, know. I'm pretty. Quite... <laughs> I'm pretty, you know, stingy with my apps. I only try one or two at a time, and if I like it, it stays on. If I don't, it goes, and I replace it with another. So, have any have you guys tried uninstalling these uh, these new apps? I'm I'm curious because the services were never really installed on your device; they just received cards. But these things theoretically are like actually, you know, placed Side on your glass or installed, right? So, yeah, I have one installed actually. Okay. So when you um, when you enable it, it just activates it, which is basically downloading it uh, from Google's CDNs, I'm guessing. And then when you disable it by unchecking or just toggling off the um, 
the app, I'm guessing it just does a uninstall. Cool. So all of this uh, installs from the same uh, My Glass page, which uh, Glass Explorers are familiar with. Yep. Uh, so you don't have to do any like side loading with like USB cables and terminal commands and stuff like that. Looks much yeah. much cleaner. Cool. Um, One yeah. last interesting thing, Keith, is we I definitely predicted in one of our last shows that, uh, uh, and I was completely wrong, that uh, GDK apps would be in its own sort of app store. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to hear the panel's uh, uh, opinion about whether you guys think it's a great idea that Google has sort of put all apps, whether it's GDK or Mirror, into one space. And if it's glassware, it's glassware, and it really doesn't matter how uh, it's built. Uh, and, and that sort of emphasizes simplicity. What do you guys think about that? I think it's just temporary. You know, I'm, I'm really hoping that in the future they are going to be, you know, the store or the My Glass app or whatever is, is going to be more clean and much more coordinated because right now it's just a mess. You know, it's not really easy to find out what you want. Like like you mentioned, you know, all the Mirror API apps and the uh, GDK apps. They're well, all it, it, what I'm saying, though, is that it really doesn't, to the average person, it shouldn't matter, right? It, it's... I want to be able to, you know, translate an app. It shouldn't matter how it was built. Well, that's true, yeah. But hmm. so I think there should be some ex more explanation of the app with each app, so that you can, you know, see screen more screenshots or how it works, so you're aware of what you're getting into. Because obviously, with a GDK app, you're probably going to have more functionality than you're going to have with a mere API app. Right. I do think they should be mixed together, but if there's a way well, to filter later on when there's more, that'd be nice. Can I can I counter that though? You can. They are doing that. So for every app, if you if you're in the My Glass page, uh, you get a title and a short summary. You can click on that and get a more detailed summary. If you want more, there's a lot more info um, uh, link to the left. You click on it, and it takes you to the website uh, with uh, a web experience giving you a ton more information. Uh, also, there you'll find out details of where who built it, you know, permissions, and, and so on and so forth. I mean, yes, it's not right in your face. But I'm I'm going to guess that the whole idea with that my glass page is simplicity and try to declutter and try to sort of take some of the design uh, aesthetics of glass, the simplicity of glass, I into some of their design there. I don't know. Maybe I'm being apologetic. As far as the, I, the glass, go ahead. Can I can I counter noble really quickly? <laughs> yes, you can We're counter. We're so the light camera, right, right now. Usually we just counter. <laughs> All right. Um, there's actually not every one of the apps do have that more information page. Uh, I just feel it should be required. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. So I mean, if for people that are familiar with the Play Store, especially online, like yeah, I think Dan, you mentioned screenshots, which which aren't really they aren't screenshots. You're not really going to see what you're going to have. There is a description, a text description. Um, but I think the interface for the My Glass page is fairly clean. Uh, I don't think it's really scalable, though. It, it works right now because there's only a handful, like maybe 20 or so apps, but there's no functionality for searching or for, like, getting recommendations. There's none of the things that you would normally see, like, in a Play Store, for example. Right. So I, I do get the impression that probably this is um, like more of a placeholder for now until everything's more finalized and the developer community is ro rolled out more generally. And uh, I think there were some early signs that, Glass did show up in the, in the Play Store as an Android device, so maybe eventually it'll end up there anyway. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. If, if you know, more apps show up, uh, this, is not, this is not a scalable solution. I think there should be at least categories, you know, like if it's a game or is it for business or is it for fun, entertainment, for news, at, you know. Yeah, it's funny. Looking just down the order, they've got a recipe app, CNN News, yeah. uh, like a document saving app, Facebook, like, there, yeah, there's no order really. Yeah. To it. So well, the order alphabetical. is alphabetical, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just alphabetical yeah. by title. So, how, 
<laughs> yeah, so expanding this a little further, you're going to have like uh, a really good app, and then a a really good app, and then a really good app. <laughs> hey, that's guys, uh, developers, if you're listening, that's how you game the app store on the glass glass glassware. Or kind um, of the yellow pages. What is it? Is it the glassware repository? What is it? Like, what is it? What's what? I, what what do you call it's not an app store, it's a glassware store, it's a glassware repository, an emporium of glass. Apps? Well if you want to coin something, we'll start calling it that. Alright, we'll call it um, the Google Emporium of Glass and Chicken and Waffles. Good. Let's go on <laughs> to the next There you go. <laughs> And uh, just just to finalize this whole uh, event thing, there was also a hackathon, uh, and some some apps came out of that. Uh, we won't go into it too too much, but since Ivan was there, uh, what did you think of the whole experience? Like this was in downtown San Francisco, right? Well, I, I think the event was uh, really great. You know, so uh, in the morning we get the announcement, and then they're letting us to try on some of the available, you know, and launched apps. After that, Timothy Jordan uh, guided us through this design sprint. Uh, exercise where you know you're separated into teams and you're supposed to get um, to come up with an idea, but you're free to do whatever you want um, with, with with the hackathon. So, and after that, for the rest of the two days, uh, people were just hacking and then coming up with some um, um, apps. So, um, uh, I, I guess I can just. Oh, by the way, uh, for attending the hackathon, uh, we got this batch. Which I think uh, Keith really yes. wanted. <laughs> yeah, I saw that and I was like, "Darn, can I drive up there and just?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, so as for the apps, the three winners. So by the end of the on, on Wednesday, um, after I, I think around 2 p.m., you know, um, all the teams they uh, they can set up some kind of a science fair, where um, they, so not everybody can present, but People can walk around and then uh, look at other teams, what, what they do, and they also have some glass guides uh, and some Google employees as the judges um, where they can make um, decisions of who's going to make it into the, uh, the final, you can say that. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the winner, um, they're, 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 they were choosing three teams, and they all got the same prizes. They both get like one hour session with developer advocates for Glass and 20 minute speech with Google Collective, which is, uh, I believe it's like a Google Venture Capital program. I don't know, you guys might know more. Yeah, it, it Google Ventures, I think, was. Right. Google so, Ventures, Andreessen so, Horowitz, and Kleiner Perkins. Right. So, so a very desirable prize for a, for a startup. And, yeah, uh, so the, get the, uh, the winner is uh, one of them is called Nef Quartz, where you can actually you know you can actually display uh, chords and lyrics uh, of uh, any music or any songs on your glass, and it's gonna play it with metronome, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, so. Uh, they actually, the demo went pretty well. People were actually singing to the song, and um, you know, I think it so deserved. Like, I do have a question about nav yes. chords. Was is it is it meant for sheet music when you're playing an instrument, or is it just for voice? No, it's uh, it's for like when you're playing guitar. You know, your glass is gonna show you like okay. the chords. Okay. That, that's song. interesting. Because yeah. I know it wouldn't really necessarily work with a piano. Because um, then you'd be looking up, and then you. Yeah, that's. <laughs> uh, he was doing it with guitar. Uh, he yeah, I could see how it could work with a guitar. Yeah. With a piano, it, it would be a little bit more difficult with a piano, or certain instruments might not work right. with it so well. Right. He would he, uh, the business model is um, paper instrument, then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, the other one is called Your Show, which is a presentation app. So you can actually view your slides on your on on, an, on your glass display, and you can also see it at the same time on your computer screen. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is it's called iMuni, which is displaying information of a Muni. Uh, for those that don't know, Muni is like one of the train 
um, facilities in the San Francisco area. Yes, and, and it's um, awful. Are, it's never on time. It is never on time. Right, right. So that's the idea. They were trying to get some real-time data, not just based on like the schedules, but uh, what actually is going on. You know, if there's if a they game, can get real-time data with the Muni, that'd be amazing. Because yeah, <laughs> they're never on schedule. So Muni is actually just in the city of San Francisco. Uh, Bart was the one that went on strike before. Bart is the Bay Area Rapid Transit, and yeah, um, they're actually pretty good about staying on schedule. Bart is. Um, when they're running. When they're running. When they're there. When they're there. And, and I wish uh, Aaron was here. We could uh, throw out uh, his uh, honorary. He's our honorary show favorite, uh, Wink Meet, which is a very interesting uh, use of the, the um, sensor data. So, like, they were able to uh, like have these probes. I'm guessing. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ivan. But you could actually you'd, like put a temperature probe into some sort of meat that you're cooking. Yes. And, uh, have uh, have it tell you like what the temperature is, set timers for when it's ready, and stuff like that, which is. I think it's awesome. I mean, they had the probably one of the best presentation. Like they brought the whole grill, the portable grill. They grilled meat, and then they were showing how it works, and it works really well. You know, you can actually see the temperature uh, going up and down in real time, and when it reaches certain temperature that you set up, mm -hmm. it's gonna ring. So. I mean, I can actually see a lot of people using this, to be honest. I, think, I thought easy. that was a very good app. I really thought yeah. they should have won. I think they, but... they were even using a Raspberry Pi and everything. So we'll have to see if uh, Aaron can give us a, yeah. a demo yeah, on the next episode. I think he needs to pitch that somewhere, because I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was great. Um, yeah, it was a great awesome. app. And a few more that I can think of uh, is the Glastogram. So... You know, it's a pretty basic photo uh, app. You, you can take photo, you can edit it with some filters, you can post it straight to Twitter. Um, the other one is check in with Glass. So basically, you can go anywhere. You can just say, okay, Glass, check in uh, on McDonald's or whatever. You can add captions. So it's like a four so square. square. Check in. So yes. a lot of these sound like they're interesting apps, but maybe not making the best use of the, the, the new sensor data, the new uh, abilities, but, but certainly right. interesting in their own rights. Um, cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and move on real quick because we're running a little long. Um, so first story I've got here was something I didn't expect to see. It was very interesting, though. We talked about uh, how glass is uh, being used like a medical context, how doctors are looking into it and how uh, you know they want to get information about their patients. Well, this is a, another medical use, but it's totally different than, than what I'd seen before. Uh, this is a uh, heads-up display, kind of like glass, much bigger, but it is a heads-up display that um, allows a doctor to basically see the veins in your arm, or presumably your arm, but like say you're trying to get um, an injection or uh, blood drawn, this, this device would see the veins in your arm and overlay that for the doctor to see, so theoretically they know exactly where they're sticking it, they won't have the little misses that you know we all have probably had happen. Um, and I think the technology they're using for detecting veins is, is uh, like the same thing that the iPad uses for, excuse me, the, uh, the iPhone uses for their fingerprint thing. It actually has like an infrared sensor that can basically see through that layer of skin. I don't know. It looks pretty interesting. What do you guys think? It reminds me of the old x-rays <laughs> that gave everybody cancer. <laughs> oh, gee. Well, yeah. This, is, this isn't, isn't projecting anything. It's just taking in the infrared that's already there. Right, so. You, right, but is it, I mean, I guess, is it sensitive enough? I mean, if you're, I mean, because your body already produces heat. So sure, sure. is there, is it really, I mean, if it, if it is, that's kind of cool. I well, just, I've uh, seen, um, I guess on an unrelated sort of thing, I've seen um, Intel had a security device at their conference or IDF conference earlier. And the way it worked was you literally held your palm over it, and it would also see the veins that are in your hand. So, uh, and you can actually see the output on the screen. So, I guess it's theoretically possible. This is just a different form factor that makes it more right. like, a, yeah. I don't know. It seems uh, useful if you're the one sitting in the chair. <laughs> it yes, and if it's gonna hurt less, then I'm all for it because I am the biggest wuss when it comes to needles. I I would love to see this come to market, because the amount of times I've sat at a doctor's office, gotten poked in the arm, and then told, we can't find your veins, go to the hospital, they'll do a better job. 
Yeah, and you know, that, that's actually a really a serious thing. My dad, for example, uh, gives um, blood regularly, and he's done it so much that they can't really use his, like the, the most obvious places anymore. So they have to like go looking around for places where, yeah, I, I guess where it's not as as callous to, uh, on the skin. By the way, I'm showing the the picture of the device right here, so you can sort of see what it's going to look like. Oh, I, I guess that's the video output. So this is what it would look like to the doctor. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That's creepy. Well, so we do say, have a question in the uh, chat room. So the, uh, Andrew Starkey wants to know, so what is this event about? Um, so Wearables Weekly, we kind of we get together once a week and uh, kind of geek out. <laughs> What's this event, though? Oh, oh, as in this, this podcast? Yes. Okay, oh. well, you can watch and find out. <laughs> But uh, yeah. So and Chris wanted to add. Uh, so from a clinic, cl from a clinician standpoint, vi visualizing the vessel is not a magic bullet for starting IVs. I kind of agree with that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more to it than just being able to see the vein. Yeah, and hopefully at least you can get an idea of which one's the bigger one, the better one. Yeah, it's definitely a start. I don't know anything that that helps. It hurt less. I'm all for it. <laughs> cool. Well, in case we have any queasy uh, fans, we can move on to the next topic. Actually, this one isn't any less queasy, but it's also uh, medical and very interesting, uh, I thought. So let me get to the story page. This was, uh, I don't know if it's a device procedure. I'm not sure exactly how you want to classify it, but there is a, a company that's got uh, something that's called a retinal implant that mm -hmm. is made for people right now that have a medical problem with their eyes, people that, that have macular degeneration or that otherwise can't see the full range of vision. Um, this is sort of like a cortical implant, if you, if you, if you know what that is, uh, but for vision. So um, it's actually taking like the same site that, that you would normally see with your eye and directly sending that into your optical nerve. So it's going directly right. into your brain. It's, it's, so if you have like any major problems with your eye, it's not really going to affect uh, the performance, at least not theoretically. Um, so I don't know. I thought this was kind of interesting, not not just because it's going to help out a lot of people that maybe be would benefit from their medical problems, but uh, in the future, this thing could be upgraded to the point where maybe it's better than normal vision. They were saying down the road that, that some of their, their prototypes could give us better vision than we normally see. I don't know. So... Um I think this is the same device. It's been around for a while. Uh, it really is. It is a procedure that you have to do, and I believe it's like a little camera that you insert into your eye. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, have heard about this, but I feel like I've seen articles about this for several years. I guess they were testing it for several years. Um, well, anything with this this sensitive of a procedure, I'm sure, is going to be in testing for a while. But yeah, it, so it's it's a it's a bit more uh, intrusive than just a contact lens. So yeah, I guess that in the current version, what it does for the people that are wearing it or not wearing it, the people that have it installed, um, is it helps you define outlines. Like if you're seeing shapes, it mm -hmm. kind of makes the contrast more obvious. Uh, so people that were shown pictures of certain things could identify them better. Um, but again, going forward, there's no limitation theoretically to what this could become. I mean, you could actually augment your normal vision or replace it entirely. Um, maybe that's going a little far. It's beyond the contact lens glass we talked about, but still interesting. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Any of you guys use uh, IFTTT? If this I do. Is that, awesome. Do you want to give us a, like a little quick description of it? Sure. I uh, just unplugged my Belkin Wemo, which is perhaps the best and worst device, the best idea but worst implementation of a uh, home automation system. But this device uh, is connected with IFTTT, and Glass is also uh, now connected with IFTTT. Uh, IFTTT, or FT, that's what I call it. Um, has a bunch of what it calls recipes, which is, I don't know whether you guys are familiar with old Unix, well, I guess more recently like the Yahoo Pipes, 
uh, or basically a way to connect different services together in order to create something magic. I remember one of the very, very first use cases that I had for IFTTT uh, when I first got Glass was, I don't know if you guys uh, saw my project Houdini thing, where I basically, IFTTT has a recipe where, where you can basically have a phone number um, talk to something else. So what I did back in April was have a phone number connect to my to this Belkin Wemo device which powers on my lights in this office. What would happen then would be I would say okay glass send message to lights or Houdini and it would send a text message to this device and then thereby powering the, the light. And when there was a nice little parlor trick for people coming over and I'll hold my hands and I'll say, okay, Glass, send message to Houdini and then it will just power on my TV. And that was pretty cool. But now it's a whole lot easier because um, it's yeah, Glass has, has its own recipes. There's a whole bunch of recipes on there. So Very definitely cool. check it out. So so yeah, it sounds like uh, if, if this and that, uh, you know, takes all of these APIs for devices and services and basically hooks them up in like new and interesting ways, things that they weren't necessarily designed for, but that can be done. So they gave a couple of examples here relating to this new glass channel that they, that they created. Uh, one was if you use the uh, service Pocket, uh, Pocket's like a Read It Later type service. Actually, I think it used to be called Read It Later. Um, they can take those news articles and send it to glass if you get a certain type of article or just all of your the news that can send it to glass. Uh, there was a, you say that device you had there was a Wemo? It's a Wemo device. It's like, I wouldn't recommend anybody buy it. It's terrible. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, and this might not be as cool after all, but it, but it says, uh, like, I guess uh, you can have a Wemo that detects motion in a room, and if, if you're not expecting yep. anybody to be home or whatever, this could be sort of a security device that sends And it just sends you a message. I have yet to get it to work, but yes, it's, ah, it's great. Gotcha. In theory. <laughs> uh, you can have sports scores from ESPN's, like, RSS feed get sent uh, to Glass. All sorts of different ways, and there are lots of devices that have APIs that may not have even been thought up by the if this and that team. So, one super and again one track mind noble says uh, in third person. One nice little recipe that they have is that if you have a jawbone up, um, if you haven't worked out in a few days or been active in a few days and uh, been too sedentary, it has a recipe to send you a message from your jawbone to your glass. It's pretty huh. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Calling you a lazy person. I, I've been working on something very similar called sedentary alerts. So uh, I, have, uh, if this and that, you guys uh, are reading. So my what mind. do you call them when they're sedentary? Just curious. For my app. Yeah. I just send them a sedentary alert and say. Oh, that's that I it. Can. Yeah. <laughs> I should call them lazy bum or something like that. <laughs> or caps. something a little bit more harsh. Points. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Cool. Awesome. Um, all right. I threw this one in there, this next story, because it was just kind of strange. So Sony apparently has patented a smart wig device. Uh, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this, because to be honest, it's the weirdest thing I've seen in a while. But this is a device that uh, is actually a wig. It's not just on your head, but it's actually supposed to be uh, like weaved in with hair, and it's a real yeah, wig. I yeah, I think Sony just, might just be patent trolling. <laughs> But, you know, and I thought, well, okay, somehow they're trying to, like, read brainwaves. They're going to do, like, some of this medical stuff that people keep talking about, even if it's not quite there yet. Uh, but, no, this is actually for getting feedback. So um, the ideas that they had actually uh, mentioned in the patent application were, like, if you're getting navigation, it can vibrate on different parts of your head to tell you, like, if you're going the right way or the wrong way. Uh, let's see. You could... Uh, uh, one, of, one of the ideas had a laser pointer embedded in it, which I don't know where that would come from. Lots of interesting stuff, but it's something. It's technically wearable, so it's on the show. Different wearables for different people, like I said this earlier. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> bald, man, bald man needs a wearable. He's got a wig. Well, Sony, you know, I'd be happy if you proved me wrong, but I think that's a really very unusual <laughs> device. I yeah. still think they're patent trolling this one. I don't think they're going to have a lot of competition in this market. 
<laughs> but again, for me wrong. Cool. Um, so there were a couple, sorry, I lost my news uh, feeds here. Okay, so uh, there were a couple other uh, devices, Kickstarter type projects. We can go through them real quickly. Uh, one called, ooh, for some reason that link's not resolving. I'll go to the next one. Um, this one's called the uh, DigiCare ERI. Have you guys taken a look at any of these? No. Which one is that? No. This one looks a lot like a Fitbit, like a Fitbit Force sort of thing. It has a clock and a pedometer. Theoretically, it's slower power and it's supposed to be thinner. Um, it's because cheaper it doesn't than use, the Fitbit Force. Yeah, it doesn't use a GPS. It uses like a digital compass to sort of figure out where, like what direction you're walking instead of getting like real information um, from a satellite. Which uh, their early bird price, which is sold out now, was thirty nine bucks. They look okay. Wow. Yeah. But even I mean, even the uh, secondary price is only fifty nine. So it's it's. Oh okay, that's not too bad. And their full price is a hundred, which is I think the Fitbit Force is one hundred and thirty. Um, and it looks it looks like it might be more comfortable than the Force. The Force, Wait. I think. There's and Ivan, you have thirty nine right? bucks. Wow. So I'm sharing it here. It comes in a bunch of like a candy colors, you know, pink and green and aquamarine and stuff like that. Um, and if this is really what it looks like, it's not bad looking. Um, like I said, a bit like the Fitbit Force. Uh, it's got that sort of OLED screen on it. So we'll see. It's a it's an Indiegogo project currently funding. And yes, I did order one, by the way. <laughs> oh, did you did you get the early bird price? I didn't know. I got I, I bought it at fifty nine. But I kinda wanted to compare it to to the force. Because I, I wasn't I wasn't really oh, she dropped I think, we, I think we think we lost Libby, but uh, cool. So I guess we can have a little demo off uh, whenever this comes out. Um, and there was one more uh, one more watch that uh, Aaron had put on here, but uh, since I can't quite get the link up, do you guys have uh, any information about this one? Uh, what was it called? Do you remember? No, it was a Kickstarter project. I um, ju I was just ranting about that. Like, it was actually a pretty interesting. I can't remember the name. It was actually a pretty interesting um, concept, right? The the designer. Uh, it's a little larger than the Omate, or or the. It's a lot more rectangular. I think that was a design decision to see whether they could probably sneak into the Google App Store or get accepted into it. Um, so uh, obviously, Omate couldn't get in because of their um, screen size. Um, I think. Um, it's a little bulky, and that's sort of. La but one thing that it does have that um, is pretty unique to that watch was that it sort of snapped off, and you can sort of mount it as a GoPro, or whatever. Oh yes, yes. Apparently, the um, it had a flashlight, uh, uh, sorry, a flash mode, so you could actually illuminate your your pictures a little better. They emphasized. Um, you know, battery life, it's a little larger, so they're, they're claiming a little bit better battery life. I don't know. It, it's, uh, you know, it's on my Pinterest page. Yet, and actually, that's a good idea to try to figure out what the name is. Um, so I've got a, an article right here. Neptune. It's called Neptune. Neptune. Pine by Neptune. Yep. Um, so I guess that's about the size of it on a person's arm. It's, yeah, that is it's a little huge. big. I like that it's longer. I think a lot of these smartwatches have come out and been uh, like square shaped, um, which I don't necessarily think is the best shape for a hand. But uh, yeah, this yeah. one's a little big. <laughs> right. And he's 19 years old, so that's oh. pretty impressive for a 19 year old. Yeah. Who's 19? The, the person who's trying to launch, launch the smartwatch. Oh, they, they're from Canada. Those yeah, those Canadians are um, a lot more mature at 19. Yeah, something in the water up there. <laughs> Any idea on the price that they were asking? No. I don't, I don't have a link to the... I've got uh, I have a link. I'm sorry. I can post it in the shoe. I've got it up right now. I put it in the chat, Keith. They're trying... It's, it's on Kickstarter right now. They wanted to... Uh, raise a hundred thousand dollars. They're way over that. Wow. They're at two hundred and twenty-one thousand. Wow. That's amazing. They're actually only one day into the campaign, and they've yeah. Yeah, more than doubled. Yeah, you know that that's one thing about the smartwatches. They seem to have been doing very, very well on Kickstarter. 
Uh, so so the, uh, the early bird is uh, 199 Canadian dollars. Wow. And those so are gone, like, but there are still gone. some yeah, for uh, 229 Yeah. So the question is, six months from now, is anybody actually going to own one of these? Um, <laughs> okay, this is why I think no. No is the answer to this. Uh, where are we? I'm just going to post this uh, in the show notes uh, un under one of the columns there. Um, this is why I think this is not going to be the case. Uh, th his argument was that um, you know people want you know people are purchasing you know activity monitors and watches that are just notification centers, sort of a little dig at Samsung. Samsung. Uh, yeah, and and you know. People really want an all of the above device. I argue that that is not true. I do not want a uh, a full on. Uh, I know it's a it's wearable computing and the the mindset. Uh, this is just my personal opinion. I don't want a full on Android device on my wrist. Um, however, I have never tried one before. So, um, Omate and. Neptune, if you're watching, because I know you watch, you told me you watch every <laughs> Thursday, uh, please send me one and I'll be willing to give it a review. But um, in my opinion, I think similar to what the end, uh, the Google Glass does with, with, with uh, their wearable device, it's not a full-on Android uh, distro on your, uh, or the Unix distro on your, on your face, right? It's it's not Android either. It's not um, what we're familiar with. It's completely stripped down and gives you only what you need. Mm -hmm. I think someone, and this is free advice to the next um, 20 Kickstarter projects that are all going to launch in the next 20 minutes, um, find out what the best use case for a wrist-mounted wearable computer is first. Yes. What do people want to do when they go like this? Uh, or what do people need? Uh, what information do people want to glean when they go like this? And once you boil that down, simplify, 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 and maybe present something that we didn't realize that we may want when we do this. Knowing companies like Apple, they are doing that. That's why they don't have an iOS version of their... Their, their their iPhone app or whatever, their, or their their iPod wrist mounted thing. They didn't even make. They didn't even uh, endorse the whole uh, wristband for the for the iPod Nano when it when a lot of people were using that as a watch. So that just sort of gives me my personal opinion again. I, I just don't think it's smart to put a full on PC uh, on my face or on my hand or on my legs or whatever if it's wearable. I, I, think, I, think, it's, uh, I think people are slowly realizing that. Again, we're not going to watch a full movie on our wrist. I think we kind of touched on that last week. It's just not, it's not comfortable. It's not possible. Um, yeah. So, I think, oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I think you're definitely right on. Um, you know, designing for the interface, like starting with the interface first and going for what the functionality that makes sense. It, it reminds me of the last one I had before getting an iPhone years ago was a Windows mobile phone. And if anybody's used one of those things, yep. I'm sorry, first of all. But what, yep. they, what Microsoft was trying to do was take a PC and force it into a really tiny form factor, and it really wasn't very good. You and, know what's uh, amazing? They're still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. <laughs> on, so. on the front of, or speaking of the Neptune Pine smartwatch or whatever, there is one thing I do like about this one over the other ones I've seen, which, mind you, I haven't looked too much into the other ones. I like how this one seems to have a lot of accessories and can be removed and other things done with it. Like, it looks like you can almost turn it into a GoPro and mm -hmm. attach it to a, a helmet. That is that is one thing that's kind of cool about that. And that is definitely... That's not something that you can do with Omate, just because... So, Keith, that pull, How useful pull is that if it, the battery life is going to be like two hours? I mean, I, <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I my, my experience here that. has been pretty I, good battery life. If the battery life sucks, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I'm just if saying that you don't one know. Yeah, you're thing right. I see that this one has that others don't. 
Yeah, you're 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 right. I mean, I can't. I hate it when people make assumptions with something they've never tried. So I can't. I I can't be guilty of that as well. You're right. And one thing Rupert about says, Omate, the, the position of the camera kind of bothers me. Yeah. I, I, so for those Where? who haven't really seen it up close, this is what you know the interface looks like, and the camera is what well, looks like the second button is actually the camera. So when you're wearing it on your wrist, it's facing like. You know, down the barrel of your 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 hand there. So, go why ahead. That, why what you're is that say? bad, Libby? What's that? Why is that a bad? Location? Because when you're using it, you kind of have to do. If you really want to take a picture, you kind of have to pull your wrist down. So yes, this is how you take a picture, which is really right. weird. Which it doesn't it doesn't sound yeah, it doesn't sound that that weird when you're looking at it like that. But basically, like if you just hold your wrist naturally. The bottom third of the picture is the back of your hand, yes. <laughs> so you have to like really you know, do, do one of these things. You know um, what it's for? But, but I, I just figured out where, uh, and I know Omate watches this show, so send me a free Omate watch. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> they made this for uh, Superman. <laughs> so well, see, they can do it on the bottom of the wrist. Right? So Spider-Man. Superman can can have a dash cam, quote unquote, while he's flying around. Uh, so that you know you can see his POV because Superman is you know uh, if you know Clark as uh, as well as I do um, he's he's a little full of himself. Yeah. So, so what you guys don't secretly don't know is uh, yeah. So Noble is Superman. <laughs> hey, hey. No. Okay. You know, the resemblance is uncanny. I've got to say. <laughs> Thanks for blowing my cover. <laughs> Anytime. I always thought he was from Street Fighter. <laughs> Damn it! He wears many hats. So he just doesn't announce them publicly. Hey, Ivan, can you yes. stick out your wrist like you're taking a picture again? Because I don't. Okay, so I'm wearing it under my right hand, right? So the um, the camera is actually at the back. If I want to, <laughs> really, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's so, I have to use it, wear it on my left wrist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ivan is this um, way, wearing it in back. selfie mode. <laughs> yes, so that is the perfect selfie mode. <laughs> yeah. I will say this: the, a, the actual quality of the camera, uh, the quality of the camera is not bad when you actually take a picture. That camera. Yeah, the, the quality is uh, not too bad. But one other thing we didn't mention because the hand is a big issue. But another thing is, you know, when you're when you're holding a wrist where the camera's facing out from from here, it's very easy to keep your arm level. It's kind of a natural thing to do. When you're actually putting it here, it's very easy to be like off by like a wide angle with your wrist. So like a lot of the pictures you take, unless you're very deliberate, are like about 30 degrees skewed because that's just how that's how it feels more natural. Interesting. And does it have any sort of focus built in, or is it nope. just sort of like glass where it's? Uh, well, I don't know if there's any autofocus, no. but my pictures have been pretty clear when they're. When it, there is a preview. What that glass doesn't have, so that is a that is a huge advantage. You can't see what you're taking a picture of before you snap it. That's that's true. So yeah, there's so even a, a dedicated camera it. button. So this is the interface. It actually is like the well, this is what they sideloaded on there. So this is like the Android camera, um, and as long as we got this here, actually, real quick, uh, while I'm setting this up, Dan, did you uh, want to mention anything about the show before we start wrapping up? Yeah. Um... So the real reason I'm on is I'm going to give away an invite. Yay! I got something, so I'm going to give one away. Very cool. So this is an invite for glass. This isn't a free glass. This is, no, this is not I'm a not. free glass, no. But as, a, as an organizer of GDG, you have special powers, and you can grant glasses just by your, by your command, correct? Yeah, I wish. That would be nice. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say the typical rules apply. Live in the U.S., um, you know, I think that's be awesome. Be awesome, yeah. I it'd be nice if you're a developer, and I hope if you're watching this all the way through, because you had to tune in at a certain part to and pay enough attention, which actually wasn't even something I said, because someone else said something too awesome for me not to make a fun thing. Cool. So, so we've. For for all of the people that are watching right now, how can they uh, how can they enroll for this possible device? So let me get. I'm gonna have them. Um, trying to think of the best. Place. Is the Q and A the best place you guys think? Um, yeah. If you like. That's what we used last time. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just gonna make this the first person to get it. 
<laughs> so get your hands ready. <laughs> so give me like what a magic word or something. So can... of what we call the gra- the glass door now. Noble's version of the name. <laughs> <laughs> So, That's while everybody's, weird. like, rewinding the video to get back to this stuff, <laughs> <laughs> well, so for anybody else that has glass, we can keep talking. So, anyway, hey, what, get your... What was the option? I heard my name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure Noble knows the answer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Noble's version of the glass store. Oh, yes. That's right. I just walked the last three uh, words there. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I remember. Um, can I? Can I win? Um, <laughs> while I'm speaking of GD or of giving out this invite, and hopefully someone actually gets this. Um, a check out developers.google.com/groups. The GDGs in your area are great. I'm sure, even though I don't know all of them. Go to them. Um, the one I have in Schaumburg, one of our organizers is going to attempt to give a talk on the GDK on December 11th, and Barbara Moline wins, and um, yeah, so Barbara, well, I'll hit you up after oh, the show. But well, Barbara, Barbara Moline is a wonderful uh, fan of the show, she and she actually has... She is a glasser. <laughs> so, okay, you can't have glass. <laughs> now i got to come up with something new, Barbara. Or if anybody's really clever and reads her response. (laughs) I probably should have stated that before. (laughs) Okay. So you're going to have to come up with another question. Can I delete that somehow? Um, Uh, Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I can delete. Oh, can you delete it? (laughs) (laughs) It's too late. Everyone saw it. (laughs) I'm surprised no one else commented it, though. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Cool. But excellent research skills, Barbara. <laughs> cool. Um, so real quick, uh, while we're waiting for a response, uh, the O8. So this is like the the stock screen. This is one of the one of the many clock faces. Um, part of their stretch goals was they came out with like 20 or 30 different clock faces. They had a Star Trek one and all kinds of interesting ones. I see it shuts off by itself. So that's the clock face. When you swipe down to sort of get out of that, you're greeted with a uh, sort of native Android interface. It looks a lot like the stock Android interface, and it goes side to side. You can get apps. You can put folders in here. It's uh, This part is actually pretty good, like getting around, navigating to apps. And when you get all the way to the edge, like it wraps around, so you're ever feeling like you're totally stuck there. But as Noble pointed out before, you know, fitting the interface to the, or fitting the functionality to the interface is really key. So sometimes, like, especially um, if you're trying to enter something into a text field, they also just have the stock keyboard on here, which, as you can imagine, on a really, really tiny screen, it's very hard to hit those letters. But Keith, it's not yes. hard. It's impossible. <laughs> I, I was trying to register my um, Gmail account. I, I was trying it for, like, ten times, maybe, and I couldn't do it. So, you know what? <laughs> I use no, this. You need one of those little nubbins. Ah. Oh, there you go. So, so there's Bluetooth. Bluetooth. To my with keyboard. That's the, the only way I could enter my password and my email. So, so now look, look at how, think about how ridiculous that is. <laughs> you have a massive keyboard for a tiny watch. <laughs> it's almost comedic. It's like, yeah. like clown school. <laughs> But you know, uh, I will say that this, said, that autocorrect is decent, so if you if you can get in the vicinity of the letters, you might be able to, to get by with it. Or yeah, I think I one, of the, one of the stretch goals was a new keyboard. They did talk about something called the Flexi keyboard, so hopefully that's... Well, it doesn't that's, matter, because if you were uh, inputting your email or your password, Flexi right. is not going to help. Hmm. A- any autocorrect is not going to help. I mean, you know, uh, no. it, it's nice for correcting what you want to say on your chat or when you're writing email, but... Some things, you just cannot use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, and hopefully they'll, right. they'll take some of this feedback and, and figure out a good way to get around it. You did mention you were following along uh, with like a chat feed earlier, like a Hangout window. Uh, well, when, uh, when you were messaging me on Hangout, um, my homemate suddenly beeped. It was the Hangout, so I just opened it up, and I, actually, I can actually read it pretty well. I, I, I was uh, thinking maybe it, it would be too small, but it, it was not. So I think it would be great, you know, if I uh, if the Hangouts have uh, voice recognition. So if I can just 
say uh, say something and then reply it. You know, it 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 it. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure you all know like Night Rider, where you know you, Michael Knight, you can talk to your watch and call your car or whatever. I think that that's like great. You know, if you can do that, just talk to your watch, just for the sake of it. <laughs> And give you lots of uh, snarky responses. So. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, Good, any uh, yeah. any updates, Dan? <laughs> no okay. updates so far. Does anyone have those last three magical words? Does, Let's yeah, repeat no the words. question again. How, 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 about a back, how about a backup? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> just, Come on. How can you not no, pick up on those words? <laughs> so just repeat the question again. All right. Noble has decided that he had named the glassware area of the My Glass page something. What were the last three words that he named it? <laughs> At this point, or just, or just I'll simply probably accept anything of yeah. the name, except for just the word glassware, because that's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, or in case we don't get any responses in the next three minutes, make maybe make up your own creative uh, name and Dan can yeah. be the winner. Or most creative one can get an invite. Dan is the judge. There is no criteria. And message me. Uh, sorry, Barbara. Um, but yeah, and live in the U.S. That's all I have. <laughs> yeah. So live in the U.S. and pay for it. You have to yeah, pay for it. I'm not paying you. That that was a big sticking point. It was kind of interesting. I had a, the glass invites I had a few weeks ago. Um, we actually offered a few of them to a few people before uh, before we offered them on the show, and they all said no because of the money. Hmm. It was just it was too expensive. Sixteen hundred dollars is a lot of money. It is a lot of money unless you live in Oregon, where there is no sales tax. <laughs> it's still a lot. Out there for a day. Go stay in a hotel. Find a friend. Get a chip there. Sixteen hundred dollars. If I had that discretionary, I'd go to Vegas and bet it all on black. Yeah, and then it wouldn't be discretionary anymore because it'd be gone. It'd be the casino. No, well, I think you already did bet it all on black, but it's called charcoal. It's called charcoal, baby. <laughs> Any uh, any responses catch your eye there, Dan? Uh, I'm actually not seeing any responses. Okay. Well, I guess well, we will. Um, Dan, when do you have to get rid of this by? Friday. By tomorrow Friday. night. Well, I guess uh, pay attention to Dan's page. Uh, we will retweet or oh, retweet. Jeez, I'm tired. Uh, reshare I'll come up with it on a new question. On the podcast page as well. So. Or oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, let, let's come up with one more question. No, 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 I'm saying I'll come up oh, with... Oh, you'll come up with another question. Okay. Okay. For after the show. Okay. Do you want to put it maybe on the uh, the event page? Is that where they can find it, or a post of your own? Um, they'll find out on the event page. Okay. Awesome. I think. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks a lot for your very generous offer, Dan. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, a very worthy person uh, gets to join the Explorer community, and uh, we'll let you know who that is next uh, next episode. So, uh, looks like we're sort of wrapping it up. There's not a whole lot of events going on in the immediate future, uh, other than Thanksgiving. So, uh, we'll probably be taking next week off rather than uh, breaking in the middle of dinner. So, uh, we'll see you guys in about two weeks. And uh, anyway, thank you, Dan and uh, Ivan, for coming on the episode. Thank you. Cool. Hold on. Is Yanir's and or wait? I, okay, Yanir, is so an Yanir actually does have glass. Okay. Um, our, well, he has an invite for glass. He was one of my invitees. <laughs> and and <laughs> he does have an invite for glass. It's kind of, uh, I've contacted the Google Glass team, and they haven't sent his invite up yet. But they have told me that they will, which isn't really much consolation, really, because he's been waiting like three weeks for this invite. Well, what's the deal with that? Wow. I don't. You know, I'll I'll tell. I'll talk to you about it off air. I mean, it's, yeah. 
It's not a huge deal. I was just a little disappointed. I mean, he is, what they tell me is that he is in the Glass Explorer program. They just haven't sent him an, an, an invite yet. Got it. No. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, this is sort of the end, but uh, again, we look forward to seeing you in two weeks, and uh, have a happy holidays. Anything else, guys? That's it. Okay. Happy holidays. Stay classy, San yes. Diego. <laughs> <laughs>